Hello guys, this is Dr. Babu. Uh, I'm going to share an interesting case I came across uh, yesterday evening at work. Uh, an elderly male uh, gentleman, he uh, presented with uh, uh, acute onset abdominal pain, predominantly in the lower abdomen, uh, associated with uh, spells of uh, nausea and vomiting. The pain was intermittent and colicky and uh, uh, on clinical examination, the physician uh, felt a palpable mass in the lower abdomen. Uh, he did a rectal exam and the examination was negative. Uh, so he sent in for a CT abdomen with contrast to find out uh, what's going on. Um, so uh, he was suspecting some sort of intestinal obstruction. So uh, we opted to not do an, uh, any sort of oral contrast. So uh, we... Uh, did an IV iodinated contrast study and uh, let's go through the images and see what's exactly going on in this patient. So I'll just get you first to the axial sections. Um, this is axial sections of the lower abdomen. As you can see over here, the uh, descending colon is uh, loaded and as I am tracing it down, what you see over here is as we approach the region of the mid sigmoid colon you can actually see the sigmoid mesocolon and its vessels insinuating into a distal loop of the sigmoid colon itself so if you see here we have a funnel like appearance of the distal loop while the proximal loop seems to be insinuating into the distal loop. This, these findings are typical of uh, an intersusception, where this is the intersusceptum, which goes into the intersusceptiens, which receives the uh, bubble loop. So wh what exactly is an intersusception? An intersusception is basically a segment of a bubble loop abnormally moving into another segment proximally or distally. Now why does it happen? Uh, it, it is usually seen in pediatric population. Okay, so let's just have some uh, an, a clearer depiction of the same pathology in coronal view. Coronal portovenous phase again depicting as you can see here the descending colon as it comes down becomes a sigmoid and here you can see a typical claw like appearance with the proximal bubble loop insinuating into the distal loop. And if you trace it further down, uh, the rest of the rectum is collapsed. So if you if you see carefully over here, and if I just adjust the window a bit over here, you can actually see that there is something within the lumen which is solid and enhancing. And this definitely does not look like feces. Um, so usually what happens is, uh, um, Bowel intersusceptions are most commonly seen in uh, the region of ileocolic uh, or colocolic, which is predominantly right-sided colon, and it happens in pediatric population. Um, when does it occur in adults? Now, it occurs rarely in adults, but when it does occur in adults, there has to be usually a lead point. And what exactly is a lead point? A lead point is something which leads the bowel to insinuate into another segment of the bowel. Now, usually it could be lesions which arise either from the wall of the bowel, intraluminal, intramural, or it could be lesions in the mesentery of the bowel, which is responsible for pulling the bowel into another segment of the loop. So in this case, uh, in this case, in the, it's most likely that there is a neoplastic growth over here in the mid sigmoid, which is responsible for this abnormal insinuation of bowel. If you can see here, you can actually observe the mucosal hyper enhancement of the loop which is insinuated inside again due to a little bit of uh, vasoconstriction uh, secondary to the intersusception and what is also observable over here is that in addition to uh, this you can also identify some round uh, lymph nodes over here yeah you can see here it is around uh, enhancing lymph nodes uh, again seen on the sigmoid mesocolon at the site of the intersusception. Again, th this again points towards a possible malignant etiology responsible for this sort of a picture. I'll show you some more sagittal, sagittal images again of the same finding. So here you go is a, you know, a, a patient always who presents with colicky intermittent abdominal pain, frank obstruction features of bilious vomiting, 
uh, you you're thinking of large bowel obstruction and this is an example of such a case uh, just to highlight some other features also identified in this case is if you can see here the entire large bowel is loaded with feces okay so if you see approximately it's not overtly distended but it is loaded now as you keep tracing down if I come towards the right colon this ascending colon if I come further down here you know this is the appendix and this is the ileocecal junction and as I trace the terminal ileum down you can see actually there is feces seen within the small bowel now this is not so not something you usually encounter but uh, whenever there is small bowel feces it's also called the small bowel feces sign it, it essentially means that there is some sort of ongoing obstruction developing in the patient and due to the chronic nature of it there is development of feces proximally into the small bowel as well okay so these are the key learning points in this case is the typical valve interference or, or uh, the spiraling of the mes mesocolon and the vessels of the sigmoid as you see a clear proximal loop insinuating the intersusceptum insinuating into a claw-like appearance intersusceptions and uh, uh, what you also need to look for in these patients is to ensure that there is no vascular compromise, any forms of uh, uh, bowel wall thickening, pneumatosis, or uh, free air in the abdomen. Uh, and also to have a key look at the main, main uh, vessels of uh, the mesentery to ensure that there is no so form of uh, vascular thrombosis. Thank you.